What is good guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Oh, I'm super excited to finally get this going. Consider this our very first episode of Island Rides. Island Rides is going to be another portion of my channel that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm pretty much going to be going around meeting up with friends, meeting new people, and pretty much just showcasing everybody's cars, everyone's builds. Hawaii is the melting pot of the world and it shows in culture, it shows in food, and it pretty much shows in everything, everything about Hawaii. And part part of it is cars, and that's why I'm gonna be doing this. So, Let's say hello to this baby right over here. I'm not gonna lie, guys, you guys' ears might hurt later on. Say hello to my boy, Aaron. What's up, everyone? Say what's up. Aaron, tell everybody about your car. So, this is a 2007 Mustang GT. Yeah, I got it in my senior year of high school. It's pretty stock, not gonna lie. It had a cannon intake from O'Reilly's, muffler delete from the previous owner, rolling around on like 20 inch American racing wheels or some stuff like that. For the most part, exterior wise, they didn't change. I ran without stripes for a long time. It came back. But after that, everything kind of changed soon as I got my hands on a supercharger. Oh, this you crazy mother. So personally, I've known this car for a really long time and this, I swear to God, this car has been through so many setups. Literally so many setups, but so many badass setups. Let's start with everything around the car before we get into internals. Uh, 10 inch American muscle, uh, GT500, Le Mans stripes, whatever you want to call them. Um, you have MMD chin splitter, where it's rolling around on Avid AV20s. They're 18 by nine and a half, it's wrapped in 275 40s, R18, and uh, these are Kumo X's PS 91s, I believe, something like that. Square setup all the way around. Oh wait, since you're wait, since you're back facing me, let's show everybody. Let's show everybody what what everyone's gonna get. Got that Island Ride shirt over here. <laughs> there you go. Sponsored by <laughs> Definitive, of course. This is a big one. I need to shout out my boy Matthew Serban. I don't even know how long ago he did this, but I was bugging him the first time I saw any of the prototypes. I was like. I want it. I want to be the first one. I want to be the first in Hawaii. I don't care how it gets to me. I need it. <laughs> and you know, he pulled through. He pulled through for sure. Didn't we take the spoiler to? We did. To there you go. Junk so shop, that's yeah. another one. So shout out to Junk Shop Pros. Like dropped it off. Honest to God. Like two days later, called me up. It's done. Picked it up. Threw it on. It's where she sees right now. So, so let's go. Let's tell everybody uh, what kind of hardware you're using as far as to button it up, especially because when you you know. The wing is pretty sturdy. Yeah, this wing is very sturdy. But of course, you need something to hold it down, especially you know if you're gonna be going at a little bit higher speed. By the way, guys, <laughs> drive at the speed limit. Don't just be safe. These are Pro Bolt USA. Uh, these are aluminum bolts, actually. These are all aluminum washers, aluminum bolts, aluminum nuts behind them. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually not the kit hardware that you would get from the Serbinator, which is what this wing is. But something that I wanted to do. Uh, black anodized beauty washers with aluminum bolts to me it just looked better basic stuff uh raxium gen 5 tail lights other than that i mean the, the outside's fairly stock so just to educate everybody s197s had uh three different model years they were from 05 to, to, nine. to 9 and then 10 to 12 and then 13 and 14. i would say this now i will feature one of my very first cars on this video i'm just putting it out there to the universe because i really want to get that car back I, even if i don't get to own it yet i really want to drive it again and i just want to put you guys into i guess what i started with i pretty much went off from owning a mustang you know with my gtr but like dude this guy's been working on his car since high school like it's fucking ridiculous this car is badass all the way around. Let's get into the badass mods now. So let's start with the trunk. For anyone says anything, yes, it's fully stripped. I needed room. I need the battery in the back. That's all right, weight have, reduction. There you go, there you go, weight reduction. I need the space in the front so the battery had to come to the back. But this is crowning jewel back here. This is the AM Performance Water Met Kit. Uh, this is all on custom bracketry, custom wiring. Everything is set just for this car, set exactly where I want it. And honestly, this used to be somewhere in the front. I hated it there. It was hard to do. I and mean, it's hard to fill when I needed it. But back here, good stuff. Tank, pumps right behind it. And I mean, 
there's a reason why I have it and we'll get to that when we get to the front. One thing too, Aaron's really crafty with fabricating stuff. So like if you guys if you guys go ahead and take a look right over here, you fabricated pretty much the bracket to mount on the yes. on the car, yeah? Yes, everything is all custom fabricated. All the nice. well, I would say acting hundred percent of the bracketry on this car that holds things that aren't off like Obviously, there's like off-the-shelf bracketry. Everything else is all 100% custom built mm -hmm. in my garage. So we'll save exhaust for the end. Let's go. Let's go in the front. I actually forgot to mention this one. So, oh yeah, the hood. This was a sock hood originally. I was running to a lot of overheating issues. One day I got bored. I was like, I just cut a hole in the hood. So I mean, that's exactly what happened. So chopped it right down here. Bent the bent the sheet metal in. Plated it up. Again, Junk Shop Pros LLC. Cannot thank them enough. Every single painted piece on this car perfectly matched. And you know, they do great stuff. So they got to that. Yep, I can attest to that. Damn right. So So actually before we even open the hood, how many hoods have you gone through? Because I oh, swear. Okay. <laughs> 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 exactly. So I had my original stock hood, which had a scoop. Then I went scoopless. Uh, then I went to a fiberglass hood, went back to stock hood with no scoop and then finally came to this mind you each of those iterations had a completely different paint scheme stock paint scoop with stripe stock hood no scoop no stripe fiberglass hood was all white when i went back to a stock hood it was carbon fiber that came off it was <laughs> back to white but it was a really shitty white and then finally comes back to this so lots of changes here all right let's show everybody okay show everybody the uh, the prize possession. There you go. So it, Woo! Is it is messy. Saline Gen 6 supercharger. This was the supercharger acted specifically for the 05 to 10, any of the three valve models. Um, this one's a little weird. So instead of the supercharger itself being on the top, it's on the bottom, it's inverted. So the, the supercharger elbow comes up and around down the back and it feeds the supercharger from the bottom, kicks up through the intercooler and then down to the heads. So. A little different. I get a lot of questions like, is that even a supercharger or stuff like that? But I mean, you hear the wine, so no questions after that. What makes this, let's, still, let's backtrack, let's backtrack. So when I first saw this supercharger, it was, we were literally, <laughs> see, he's gonna tell the story, but backstory. There was this one night where I was at Aaron's house and then I was walking uh, in the living room and then me being clumsy and I got my big feet, I stubbed my toe on something super hard. And I'm like, I looked down and I was like, bro, what the fuck is this? And it's a freaking supercharger. Like literally, like just, just this right here. Just that, None of, no wiring, nothing. And like, dude, I was so hyped for Aaron because he's been saying that he's wanting to supercharge his car for the longest of time and like oh my god okay Aaron tell everybody the story of how the supercharger came to be because this is something super unique <laughs> you know what we don't have that many car shows but there was one out in one of the car car dealerships on the on the other side of the island from us um, and they're doing an auction so this supercharger has actually been sitting been sitting at that dealership for I think like nine years or something it's been sitting a while the reason why it's been sitting is because it didn't have anything it was just a supercharger and for those of you who own salines you guys know that there's a lot of proprietary stuff um the bracket for the alternator the big one is a coolant crossover pipe that's all proprietary to saline they didn't have any of it i called around i called saline i called a lot of um, supercharger rebuilders I, I called everyone that i thought who would have it and no one had those parts so that's why um for the most part no one wanted the supercharger and i ended up getting it for like 600 bucks so, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Say that again, say that again. How Six. much this how much did you get the the supercharger for? Yes, six hundred dollars. Six zero zero. Yeah. Six hundred dollars. Who can get a supercharger not even used for six hundred dollars? Mind you, it did actually take quite a lot. There's a lot of custom parts that had to be made for this. Um the biggest thing, modular motorsports racing, they used to make a kit that deleted the crossover on the three valves they don't even make that kit anymore picked up that kit um another friend with us who has a saline really fortunate that he let me take off his alternator bracket and 
Um, That's cool. I had it copied in steel. So it was all 3D catted. So who fabbed your steel though? Steel was all CNC cut um, by a local company called Universal Engineering. Mm. But they just cut me the pieces. Uh, everything else, one day I was just like, I took everything off that I needed to take off, slapped the, I put the bracket on the way I wanted it, used the motor as a jig, welded it up that way, pulled it off, finished welded it, stuck it all back on. So that's how the bracket kind of went about. But that's dope. Those are two main things. Intercooler for the supercharger also needed its own cooling system. So that's why the battery's in the back now. So I have a nice little big, I believe it's a one gallon Moroso aluminum supercharger coolant tank. So originally when I first put this all together, it had a, it, uh, it's called an auxiliary water pump for like Volkswagen and Audis use them. It was cheap, it was like $12 and I was like, this will work, whatever. So I stuck it in it, I made it work. Eventually I ran into cooling issues. So now currently what's sitting in it, it's a, it's a water pump out of a 2013 GT500. So no cooling issues anymore. But before I continue with anything, the one thing that no one really knows about the car is how like Frankenstein together it is. It, it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad, but I mean, it works. So that's about, that's about all I care about. Isn't this a coolant reservoir for the for the S550s? No, so this is oh, factory it coolant like it. reservoir, but everything behind it. So I don't even know what this coolant line is from. It's from somewhere. Um, O'Reilly's was cool enough. They let me into the back and they let me like look around for pipes. Cause nice. when I told them what I needed, they kind of looked at me like, what is this dude smoking? <laughs> so I, <laughs> yeah, I kind of just wanted to go hang out in the back there looking for all the random crap I need. That is dope. So from what I know, pretty much how long did it take for you to do the whole build or like from start to finish from the moment you started taking us part your manifolds and all that how long did it actually like take to do so, it this is the one thing i really didn't want to screw up so i had like six seven months of planning before i did anything as, like you, six, should, seven as months. you should i just had to be for sure start to finish including fabbing the bracket putting it on fabricating whatever i needed that i didn't know how to put it together until everything was together it took two days. Two, so, days. two days for all your renters at home, and you think you cannot do it? This guy, this guy did it. So anybody can do it. About approximate, approximately how much power are you putting out with this car? First time this car ever hit the dyno, it made 305 horsepower, 320 foot-pounds of torque, if I remember correctly. So this was done in steps. Originally, when I first put this put this car together, um, it had a five-pound pulley on it. Uh, mm -hmm. right now it's sitting at about nine PSI, a little bit more stuff, but final numbers was 430 horse, 400 foot pounds of torque. The caveat is that it was really hot. I'm not going to say that's an excuse for making like numbers, but the worst part is like really like two days later, I destroyed the clutch because oh yeah i remember that yeah i remember that just absolutely destroyed the clutch the guy at the dyno said that my clutch might be slipping i didn't really believe him i just thought maybe i'll make less numbers but i was coming home one night and just no clutch <laughs> <laughs> the little pull and just oh cool i don't have a clutch now rad so i i don't know what it is now so so pretty much for transmission you're running what a stage two clutch no everything about the transmission is stock except for a uh, blowfish racing bracket and a her shifter but nice. it's running a McLeod RST, not XT. I should have gone XT, but whatever. But What's the difference? So the RST is a street clutch. Street is what they call it. It holds mm. up to 800 horse. The RXT is rated for 1200 or 1000, something like that. I should have went with that because right now I'm, have, I'm actually having slipping issues, but it's not too bad. So for a while, this car had a lot of cooling issues. So these cars are actually infamous for blowing the BECs. BEC stands for Bust Electrical Connector. And it sits right underneath the fuse box and mine melted. I know, you went through a lot, yeah? Yeah, I went, went through, through a lot. I did a lot of random stuff trying to figure this out. So I went, so upgraded the radiator. It's currently running a Mishimoto radiator. I upgraded the um, cooling fan right behind it, which is also out of a 2013 GT500. Um, all of that was great. Didn't actually work. Um, kept blowing fuses. So I built a brand new, like a standalone fuse box that worked for a little bit that also ended up not working. So the final iteration, granted it's super ugly, it works. 
is a self-resetting fuse and um, relay combination from painless performance so nice good for them they make a pretty badass kit if any of the other three valves have this issue this is the way to go this has absolutely no issues ever since i did this so now this is of my favorite part of the car this is gonna be my favorite part right here oh my god wait we gotta get this we gotta get this we gotta get this Let's go for a test drive. Oh. It's been a while since I've driven stick. These seats are stock, yeah? No, these are, these are S550 seats. Oh yeah, these are S550s. NRG wheel. Sick. This actually feels really good. Yeah. Like, shout out to Ref Hawaii. Oh, you ordered this through Ray? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, right, dude. I think I can hear it now, but what kind of exhaust are we running? So this is a, I think it's a center off-road H-pipe um, that had to be cut down because to make clearance for the supercharger under the hood, it's running one inch drop mount. So the H-pipe right. is cut an inch to be raised to be you know, taller. Um, it's got magnetic magna packs right after the mid pipe. Also all custom made, and then shoots out to uh, pipes and muffler delays. It sounds good. Actually, it doesn't drone as hard. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, remember like how my car, yeah, where the outlaws used to drone? That drone a lot. It's not too bad though, but yeah. Um, that's kind of why I went, uh, went mid muffler, because supposedly that's supposed to fight drone. So Nice. And how many exhaust setups did you go through? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bad so the original one was stock H with muffler delete. So that's one. Nice. Um, Cadet eight, Cadet X. I'm sorry to shoot, I don't know, uh, Flowmaster Super Tens, and then Cadet X to Magnaflow dumps. Magnaflow dumps to uh, full exhaust. So straight out the back, then a final link Catalyst X to mid mountain magnet packs, and then off road H to current setup. So that's seven. Shit. Yeah. Seven. Now, remember that one night you came to Alamoana, where we were hanging at Alamoana and you had the dumps in the parking yeah. lot? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Dude, okay, so Aaron had these dumps like. Oh my god, it was what from the mid pipe? Yeah, just, just a straight dump, right? It just turned straight down to the ground. Yeah. So like we're uh pretty much we were at Alamoana in the parking lot and like this fool pulls up and he he comes up, stops the car, and he's just like rah, 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 rah. like literally the ground was shaking like oh bro like, that was the most best feeling ever though. No. Like it was Okay, we were hoonigans before, you know, we're, <laughs> we're adults now, we're adults now. Damn, this thing... It feels so good. What is, this, what is the suspension on this? So, this is riding around on Ford Racing struts and shocks. Um, also not, they're off the shelf shocks, but the front struts are cut to make room for ground control racing sleeves. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's on ground control racing sleeves on Ibok. I don't remember what, I don't really remember the, the spring weights, but they're Ibok springs. But. Yeah, I remember, I used to run the Ibox too. Yeah. So I know that like Mustangs get a bad rap for killing crowd, you know, not, I shouldn't say killing. Sorry, I know Mustangs get like a bad rap for just being too obnoxious in the crowds. But when you really think about it, I, I, I kind of because I used to be a Mustang owner, and I know that there's always there's always just that joke of oh you're gonna run into the crowd. But really, it's not. I don't. I honestly believe it's not the car. It's the drivers. You're not wrong, man. Right. 
like if the right driver was to sit in any car and did the right thing I don't think you would have a problem I really believe it's, it's the driver it's either they don't know how to drive they can't or they can't control the car to what it's supposed to be the thing is though to fight all of that stimulation this car is not only on forgot something if you guys made it this far hit that subscribe make sure you ring the bell share this with 10 people and let's build this channel together guys can i get a two-step